and we are live hello youtube welcome to a new coaching video and today we're going to talk about perspective so what is perspective it is that thing that uh, implies that not everyone thinks the same way not everyone builds their deck the same way and so sometimes we make bad decisions because we assumed based on our perspective and the opponent had a completely different one. So, because there's going to be a lot to think about, I already started the mind map today. I, I did the first level. So, perspective is based on four axes. We obviously have our perspective, we have our opponent's perspective, and perspective is either based on facts or is based on bias. Are we good on those terms? Like, is there anything that I need to explain on those terms? I think we're good. All right. I understand it from my perspective, but... <laughs> yeah. Americans don't deal in facts anymore, so we're a little sketchy on that term, but... Okay, but... I think Europe still uses that, so we'll, we'll be okay. Uh, all right, let's start with the obvious one, which is everyone's perspective, like our perspective when we're in the game. So what it is based on, like, what do we use to build our uh, perspective? This is the moment where you guys shoot ideas. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure it's quite what you have in mind, but like what we enjoy, um, our own goals. Uh, I was more talking like in a game, like in order to mm -hmm. anticipate things, what do you base your perspective on? So it can be what you enjoy, like obviously you're going to think, think more about things that you enjoy. I think what you've seen oh. recently tends to influence your perspective quite a bit. Of course. Mm -hmm. What beat you? Yeah. And so we're not necessarily talking only about rational influences. There could also just be Absolutely like tough beats not. we recently had. There, there's yeah. literally a category that is bias. Right, yeah. Past so, experiences, yes. Yeah. Past experiences, but also accurate, data-driven, or um, like uh, recency bias, or um, you know, overemphasizing tough beats, that kind of thing. Overcorrecting. Uh, overcorrecting. Yeah. How could we generalize that? Like, I have like fears come into mind. Mm -hmm. Um. So, uh, how to generalize it? Like, um, um. No, I, I honestly, I think overcorrecting, like the idea of like, um, you know, somebody beat you, and if you'd had Shang, you could have won that game. So then you drop an important card and put in Shang. And then the next 10 games, you needed the original card. Um, but isn't that experiences? So, that you experienced something, let's call mm -hmm. it traumatic. And yeah, that's right. That like, tilted your perspective. Yeah, I think that's right. So then what I'd want to do is carve off the difference between experiences and data. Um, because our experiences are not the same thing as data. I'll go more in depth and say data available. Because the data we don't know about cannot impact us. Sounds great. Yes. Okay, I'll generalize that juice box because juice box just said bad beat hills. I'll generalize and say mood. Mm -hmm. um, I think again we all, we don't talk about this much. Uh, uh, I think because most of us have majority of the cards, but um, you know, I imagine for a lot of people, the cards you have influences what you expect to see. So I think that's really probably important. Well, isn't that like experiences or like recent events? I mean, it depends how specific you want to get. Like if you, you know, I, and that's why I was trying to get some things that cross over. Like, like, you know, hot locations can influence your perspective when you're playing a game, but that, and that also belongs in facts too, right? Because that's a, that's can a I go, solid. Can, can I say game progression? Does that fit your idea? Sure. I think that's fair. Okay. So we have a lot of hours. So. In those, what do we put in bias and what do we put in facts? Experiences goes into bias. For these recent events.
Uh, so would mood. Of course. Yep. I think another one for ours would be goals. And I, and I mean that like, you know, if I'm playing a match and I'm trying to win for, I'm finishing missions, that may, I may play completely different than if I'm trying to win, you know, a ticket. Okay. The goals are definitely a bias, right? Yeah. Uh, I think another bias is like how badly we need the win. So like if it's uh it's feeling high stakes because isn't that um goals, you desperately in a way. Um so goals it it's definitely a category of goals, but goals could be also really positive things like you want to learn how to use this deck or something. Um so you're more open to a learning experience, whereas um this would be more kind of like um you know, you start re you or start over retreating because you imagine the opponent has every possible counter card and something like that. Mm. I feel like what you're describing is like a mix of like mood, experience, and goals. In a way. Yeah, yeah, fair. I'm probably just saying psychology, honestly. Yeah, but like to me, psychology would. Yeah. Like, to me, perspective is a branch of psychology. Yeah. No, I buy it. We've got it. Yeah. Uh, okay, so am I putting everything else in facts? Hmm. I feel like a lot of these could go into both. Like, recent events could be a bias, again, if you're oversampling, or it could be a fact. Like, you literally have been seeing a lot of Shang today, kind of thing. Ooh. And to clarify, this bias is like our or our opponent's personal bias, or the game's bias, or. For now, because... we're going to go general and we're going to say, like, the what makes our perspective potentially not fit reality like mm -hmm. facts mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. our perspective cannot like be like uh further from reality because of it and bias is your perspective can be derailed from reality because of it ah then we might need luck in bias um you know Poor sample size, like last coaching, we were trying to deal with Thanos and Death and Discard, and I think we didn't face any of those decks, so we might over-conclude, oh, I guess nobody's running those decks, and we played five games or something. Mm, then I'll go with sample size. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So some of them are tricky, like facts are certainly subjective, but I don't think that's bias. Um, what we enjoy is actually a fact. True. Maybe fact isn't the, the right word for it. Because in the end, like, our perspective and the opponent is, are like the same, except they're reversed. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what we want to know here is how, like, what can we use to guess our opponent's perspective? In a way, not how our opponent builds their perspective, because they uh, just build it okay. the exact same way as we do it. But mm -hmm. here, it's more like a question of point of view. From our point of view, how does the opponent build his perspective? Because these uh, are all things okay. we yeah. have access to when it comes to us. We have no mm -hmm. idea about our opponent's recent events, what they enjoy, experiences, and everything. I see. I see. So then, well, one of them you already previewed at the beginning. Um, we tend to overassume our opponents are exactly like us. Um, so we use ourselves to model the opponent. Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, we could also just use the meta, or we could use um, decks that our you know, content creators are pushing, because we assume, oh, we've seen those two cards, they must be running this deck. Mm -hmm. Um, um, there's, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was trying to, because you said two things at the same time. So the first one is we're going to mirror our perspective yeah. and just think people think like us. And the yeah. second one was? The other, 
um, we're going to think people are exactly like content creators or the meta, um, that they're running a popular deck that somebody else okay. um, recently posted. Um, and then... I'll say it this way. I love it. Um, then the third one might be something like um, we have them on a pedestal. Um, so we just assume they're a snap god, they have the perfect counter in every moment, they know they have some wild new deck we've never seen before, and it turns out they were just running the same one or something. Um, but we assumed it was going to be really clever or interesting, and we give them too much credit. Well, I, I think one thing is, when there's two pieces of information that we actually do have access to that we... I, I tend to... I try not to overuse, but I do evaluate, right? The presence of a halo and the presence of the infin- an infinity card back. Uh, we have the MMR and we have oh, we could, uh, Cosmetics. Mm-hmm. Is it okay if I say it this way? That's fine. Uh, yeah, I think so. Or, or skill-related cosmetics, whatever you... T- I mean... Well, I would, it depends, but, yeah. because if I see a card, uh, an infinite card back from, like, better days, do I assume they just like it, or do I assume they haven't played the game in two years? No, I mean... Yeah, I think that... I think I always look at... I mean, of course, the ones from the same season are the ones from... Or the ones from... Uh, the, again, the... Uh, the halo is probably a bigger influence, right? I, at least that's what yeah, I kind of feel. Yeah. Yeah. This is um, harder to quantify and maybe a bias, but um, in Conquest, I tend to think of like really lucky on the draws. I start to notice that pattern. Like if they just always have Zabu on two, right? Like, you know, we're in mm-hmm. match seven and they always have Zabu. I start to get, I don't know, suspicious or. Uh, um, uh, okay. I'm I- not sure. It's, yeah. I know how it's called in French. I don't know how it's called in English. It's I would call it like repetitive bias. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. you get used to an event, so you just assume it's gonna happen again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like salience, um, in a way. Um, uh, I mean, I call it's I'm like just somebody... like assuming, like in yeah. fr- in French, in French, it would be like assuming the repetition, literally. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Hmm. So if anyone has a term for that, I'll take it because I have no idea how to say that in English. Um, bad statistics. <laughs> Generalization. Uh, like... yeah. yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like if somebody says to you on a road trip, um, "Wow, there's a lot of blue cars today on the road." You'll start noticing every blue car. Now it seems like every car is blue, right? Yeah, because um, you pro- might even call it. Oh, sorry. Then we call it overfocus on repetitive events. Yeah, like priming effects in a way. Um, what do you call that? Priming effects. Like this? Yeah, exactly. Okay, never heard that term before. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we have a lot of bias. We have how we build our perspective. We have our opponent. What are some other facts? What are things that cannot be challenged? Well, if they're running a Galactus, you know, uh, Avatar, you know they're running Galactus. That's okay, so in the bias, I'm going to put cosmetics. <laughs> that sounded like a fact. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, in the I fact, I could, run, I could add Bishop <laughs> runs Quake. That's a fact. That's right. <laughs> Bishop, I hate to tell you that I often run a Galactus Avatar, specifically because I want people to, like, be really worried about <laughs> spreading their points across lanes. Um, yeah. yeah um, it's, I, I, it's why I, I, I refuse to... I never run an infinity card back. Um, mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. I, I was like, why, why give them that knowledge? That I, I, I've, mm-hmm. you know, I, I hit infinity already. Yeah. Um, so this might be way too basic, but in terms of facts, you tend to assume that your opponent wants to win. Um, well, that not they're not fact. running. That's bias. Yeah, so this is this is tricky, right? So I don't know. Actually, come to think of it, no, they might just be tinkering with a deck. I mean, yeah. you, you can't assume that your bias 
because of your goals and your opponent isn't because of theirs. Yeah, that's right. And also, there's literally a card, Agatha, that does throw cards randomly. So, yeah, no, never mind. Yep. Hmm. Is one of the lessons here is that there's almost no facts we can actually have about the opponent? Because the whole idea here is we're playing somebody who is not revealing their intentions, is not revealing why they're doing things, and has not revealed the remaining cards in their deck. And that's why... I Cards that gain information for you, like Spider Ham, Cable, etc., are useful because you can replace all your biases with more and more data. I think there's some facts you can tell. I think, for there instance, some, you know if they're running. I think there are if, some if they're facts, running, mm -hmm. but right now you're thinking too like uh, too fact. Like your your thinking is too factual. Hmm. For example, like, fact, fact number one, we know that they have 12 cards or 16 cards, right? Yes. So you can tell example, that within turn uh, one. Facts. There's something that it's because you're thinking about the general part of the game. But there's a fact is, mm. you know, their resource available every single turn. Mm. You know, many cards I are see. in their hand. You know, many cards are in their deck. Mm. You know, how much energy they're, they're working with. These things cannot be changed for the common turn. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. There's another thing. Is and that's why I said we worked on it already. And that's the biggest one. It's called the visible information. The card they huh. played, that's a fact. Yep. Like they can't take them back. They can do things to it. Well, they can play Beast, mm -hmm. but that's not what I meant when I said they can't take the back. Yeah. Yeah. They can't, they can't bluff the cards they have yes. once they've played them. They yeah. cannot bluff the fact that they have it. Like... Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see. I see. Yep. So, what are other facts that we can base our reasoning on? Well, I think, and this, I don't know if this falls under resources available, um, or w maybe it's under visible information too, but, you know, you can tell if they don't play a turn, right? If they don't, a, a lack of a play is still, is still information building. Well, that's, I, I guess I'm, I need to, like, spread, like, visible information, because otherwise, like, every visible information is a fact. So exactly. Yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll build categories. So, so, so Yeah. Uh, would another is... fact be oh, go ahead. like repeat it like if you're playing conquest you know what cards are in their deck or would you put that under no it's definitely, visible information it's, uh no it's i would call it like known information okay. but mm -hmm. right now we're just gonna go into cards they played okay we'll just assume yeah. that in conquest the cards you saw last round they couldn't change their deck Okay, okay, so okay. there's a big one, and it's in the freaking name of the game. Whether they snapped snap or not. Snapped. That's yes, a big yes. fact. Jeez. Whether they have yes. evil? <laughs> yeah. That's the biggest one, I think. Did they snap? Yeah, but this one is so. I don't know. Did they snap is a fact. Yes. They snapped because XYZ, that's bias. And this one I think is really important to split yes. into two. But the fact yeah. is, they think they're going to win. Ah! At, least at that point in the game, they thought they were going to win based on their perspective. I mean, but a bluff snap is literally them thinking the only way they can win is if you think they're going to win. Yeah. They still think that action is going to help them win cubes. Well, okay. If you retreat, so what... they won. Mm -hmm. So their snap still led to them thinking they would win. Hmm. Right now, the one player who runs Kang is just fuming listening to this. <laughs> Well, hopefully this session <laughs> happens before they rework it. If you watch this there after the inevitable 2027 Kang rework happens, just cancel mm -hmm. everything we said. 
That's right. Haha, <laughs> 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 uh, we tricked you. Um, no. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, this is... Okay, so this is definitely... I don't think it's pure bias. I don't think it's fact either. There's got to be some kind of category for educated guesses. Because yes. some cards are traditionally comboed. And so if they play Beast, you can... And Beast is not produced by, like, you know, one of those locations that create cards or something. If, if Beast is in their deck, um, you can assume they have the kinds of cards that benefit from replaying. Um, you can't, one for one example... One. Okay, good. Statistics. Statistics are facts. They're unsure facts, but they're still facts. Yeah, probabilities. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, probabilities. And that's the big one that we have to work on today. Mm -hmm. Probabilities. Okay, so we got most of the ones I wanted. So we're good. So now we're actually going to test that in a real... Like in a real setup. So this is just a YouTube video of my Infinity Conquest. Just ignore the weird face on the bottom left. So you have my deck. We're just gonna watch the game, and at several points, I'll ask, "What do you guys think the person is gonna do?" Except, I don't want you to say it. I want you to type it in the chat and not send. I want everyone to send their answer at the exact same time so we don't influence each other. Oh, fascinating. Okay. Yes, I can do that. All right. Oh. Number one. What are they playing? And is this fact or we're just like um, You answer best what guess? you think. You base yourself based on your perspective. You have two facts right now available. Um, I can't see the. We, do we know how many cards they had? Because we didn't see. That would be nice to know. But what do you mean how many cards um, they had? Oh, total in the deck. I, it is yeah, not. Yeah. It is not a Thanos. I assumed it wasn't Thanos, but I was. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, okay, hold on. Gotta figure out how to type into this darn thing. Okay. Bonus points for tell me what cards you think are in their deck. Okay, hold on. <laughs> um, basically, we might have enough information at this point to guess at least 10 to 12 cards. If you mention a specific deck, um, do you want us to type them all out, or is it assumed they're running the standard version of that deck? It depends what you call the standard version, but yeah, you can tell me like the name of the deck and like the cards that could be discussed. If you tell me they're running this card, I'll assume... You mean Dracula, Apocalypse, and Morbius are in the deck. Gotcha. But for example, if you think Gambit is standard in this card, we could discuss mm -hmm. that. All right. I need one more fact from you that I couldn't have. Um, what day were you playing this? How long ago? It was yesterday. Okay, cool. I am ready to send when you say. All right. Is everyone good? Wait, still typing. Sorry. Take your time. Take your time. Okay, that is what I can get off the top of my head. Yes. All right. For now, I'm not putting on a timer. We might actually do it with everyone as one minute, just like we're in a game later on. We'll see how that goes. All right, then let's send. <laughs> not Thanos, Mr. Negative. What the hell is that answer? I know it's not Thanos, you said. So I was like, uh, Zabu could be, you know, Zabu on two. Right now, Mr. Negative is something I'm thinking about. All right. So Black Knight. Okay. So not for long and Silvermint had the more detailed answer. Mm -hmm. So can you guys tell us a little bit more? So not typing this time. Just explain your thinking. You want to go first, not for long? Yeah, sure. They're basically um, a team, so whoever goes first, the other one yeah. can complete after. Yeah, yeah, we said the same deck, so that's why. Yeah. yeah, I think the only deck that I can think of in my head that runs both Zabu and War Machine 
now, after everyone's done testing stuff, is the Black Knight deck because it runs the four cost cards and it runs infinite. Okay. Funny thing yeah. is, in all the cards you listed, not for long, there's only one four cost. Yes, I was trying to speed myself up. I knew Ghost Rider was in there. And. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so Ebony now, now that you technically... have time. So, okay, Silverman had Ghost Rider. I'm not saying it's, it's real or not, by the way. Uh, mm -hmm. So, by the two of you, so we have Black yep. Knight, Zabu, War Machine, Shang, Infinite, Magneto, Blade, Stiff, Ghost Rider. Am I missing one? There's one I'm not sure about. Um, we have nine already. Do they have. Yeah, um, do we have Blade? in there um uh, yeah, not do. for okay. long has it yeah um i'm not sure if they're running crossbones i've seen some versions of this deck with crossbones yeah that would be a question mark uh, for me yeah i, think I totally one missed the, cable. In the deck. <laughs> oh my sorry, gosh i totally missed that the war the war machine was pulled by the cable i just didn't even see that fact no uh, no wonder okay, okay what did you think was when i said you have two facts to work with what was the second one I, I just I don't, I, my thought was like the number of cards in the deck. That was my thought because we had just talked about that. So uh, here we are. That was so stupid. It's not a quake deck, so he's not very interested. I get it. <laughs> we don't Doesn't know yet that it's quake. Um... All right, so Judah missed it as well. I guess. Do you want to take back the Sarah control answer, Judah, or do you want to stand by it? I'm not saying it's bad, honestly. Like Zabu and War Machine could be in Sarah control with someone testing it. I'll take it back. Oh, um, you take it back. Is, okay. um, there might be a Call Obsidian or a Giganto. Um, do we have Hope on this list? For now, neither yeah. of you um, has Hope listed. Um, I don't know. There's some variables. Like It could be Hope or Mobius. Um, I'd expect to see yeah, either a Magneto or Giganto. Um, Call Obsidian would make sense. I think we've got to put Call on this. But I guess Call versus Crossbones, it's unclear. Yeah. Right. There's, a, there's a couple trade-off slots. Let's put it that way. Okay, so, we had team, we think we have the deck. The other ones, what in their reasoning is based on facts, and what is based on bias that we could challenge? Mm. Okay, so, the fact is based on, the, you know, you see Zabu, and you see War Machine. So, you're looking at, Zabu tells you you're going to see several, you're, you, you expect to see some four drops. So, that's where the, and... War Machine tells you that you're going to see you. Some of those four drops should be restricted play cards too, right? That's thus the Call Obsidian, thus the possible Crossbones. Um, you you may also see. So that would be those would be. I, I I would say those are probably facts that you could say. I mean, the the War Machine and the Zabu and four drops, and then assuming the two cards interactions gives you some possible, you know, cards to go with. Um, and then the biases would be the full list. Some of those full lists out are based on, of course, what's in the meta currently. So what have you seen and what have you read, right? Because you don't know what this person's playing, but you know what the you know, content creators are posting. You know what the testing have shown, and you know what you played in the last, say, 20 games or something like that. Okay. Yeah. I do think the reasoning makes a lot of sense, but I think you're missing one big information but that's probably because you didn't know that deck also existed but what if i told you they play lockdown yes i i actually play a version of this with lockdown okay but what would you mm. buy more would you buy more lockdown or would you buy more black knight um i've seen a lot more lockdown um so that would be my bias uh then Black Knight in this situation. Okay. As for this the is audio, why I'm asking what... Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, just now if we had to vote. Who votes there on Black Knight? Who votes there on Lockdown? What time yesterday was this? Uh... <laughs> and I'm, I'm not being silly. Like, I feel like there was a shift. Know, we know, um, we know. Lockdown really yeah, from, ahead. like, standard Black um, Knight decks to um, around sometime yesterday, folks started to... Um, do I have precise Just time? more with lockdown. Do I have precise time? I mean, I'll take like morning, morning, afternoon, evening, I think. No, no, no. When was time I'll, here, I'll here on the time. Give, time. give me the, the time. 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 YouTube, give me the time. What round was this in? That's what I was saying. Mm. 
Oh, what round? This was the this was for the avatar. Ah. Uh, okay, I can't. I can't know. I, I don't know the time, but it was on a Saturday. So for me, it was early afternoon at the earliest. So about okay. Yeah, it could go either way. It's right on the cusp um, between the two decks. Okay. Now, other question. Did you consider lockdown just because it was me saying it? No. Okay. No, because of the more machine. If All right. The more. Let's keep it going. Mm -hmm. So for now, like... For example, does anyone think here playing Mobius is a bias or is it a fact? It's a fact. Okay, why? It's a fact. Just in case they enchantress you, they um, you, they can also cancel the result. Yeah, but the fact is, I don't care what they play. I see yeah, Zabu, I can just Mobius. Oh, yeah. I could actually spit it up. All right, do we have mm -hmm. more information about their deck? Or does Hope Summers just tell us, oh, well, cool, they're playing a good deck? <laughs> does anyone want to take a gamble on the definitive archetype based on they played Hope, Hope Summers? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, so going going with Black, I'm so going with Black Knight. All right, we still have big Black Knight. I mean, so what we're expecting oh. right now oh. is... I mean, it comes down to whether or not this is the whammy. They are representing... It is a fact that they're representing that they have a Black Knight deck. We don't yet know that they do, but it's sure seeming like a Black Knight deck. Okay. No. Of course, I have the list right in front of my face. Okay, so here I'm hesitating between two plays. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, can can does anyone wants to answer like which one would they have picked and which facts can we base our conclusion on? Like which fact can we use to actually decide? I mean, it seems like you originally are trying to contest Asgard, uh, but then you realize they have the potential to you know, um, I'll start on points, and then you probably are planning for, look, you just want more energy going to next turn because whatever they're going to be doing, discard lockdown, who knows, um, it is way better to have one extra energy right now and just give them Asgard. Um, you also have um, Killmonger in case they happen to be running, um, you know, they're going to drop like an Ebony Maw, you have War Machine yourself, you have good counters. Um, so I think you're preparing yourself to be a reactive player rather than aggressively trying to pursue Asgard. Okay, I think you're going to do the play you have now, Hope spider him. There is one mm -hmm. big fact you're missing. Hope I... is in Asgard lane, so they're going to play into the Hope lane. Yes, and mm -hmm. the reason why I'm playing Gladiator on Asgard isn't because it's Asgard. You want to clog in? Yes, because right. at worst, I miss, and if I miss, mm -hmm. I still take a spot behind Hope Summers. Mm -hmm. And there's a fact that's on the screen. I have Shang Chi in my deck. Mm -hmm. Right, because you have. Yeah, gladly. There's, I guess, one more fact. Right now, we're at turn four, and nobody has snapped. Yes, because for now, although, well, I don't, I don't know if they figure out what I've played. Like Mobius and Cable could be like Sarah, could be Surfer, could be Loki. They're not necessarily mm -hmm. like certain of what I play, and I'm not certain of what they play. And that's probably yeah. the reason why both players are still like, meh, let's just play generic stuff, because we have no idea what we're up against. Yeah. Alright. Oh. Okay. Okay, so what was the idea? Well, now we, now we know what they play, but... Uh, yeah. Ah, it's harder to pause with the 1.5. Alright. So we know yeah. this is Hope Summers and uh, and Spider Ham, and now we know what they play. But actually, the one point five is we're knowing to discuss. 
Oh, nice hit. What was in the pig? I missed it. The it came back too fast. Um, it hit Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider. Gotcha. Nice. Ah, Spider Pig is so good. Um, okay, but what was your question for us, Dan? Um, My question was, like, I could have considered Hope Summers onto this and Spider-Ham on the left. Mm -hmm. Maybe take it if they gave it up. Now I gave them the cards, which is annoying. But mm -hmm. if we look at this, there's a reason why I didn't I changed my mind on putting it to Asgard, and that is a fact. And it's a really difficult uh, one to spot. But does anyone have I an think idea? There's a couple. Um one is you've got a brood which um, wants there to be at least three spots. The other one is you want more slots to play behind Hope. Um, That's not the big one. Uh, uh, oh, it could be you that because you're... Oh, go ahead. You, I was going to say you haven't drawn... I was going to wonder if because you haven't drawn your finishers, right? You haven't drawn Surfer yet. No. The the answer is Gladiator. How many cards does one have in a deck at the start of the game? You at the beginning of round one you've drawn four, so you have eight left. Okay, how much do you have at the end of the game if you have drawn zero? If you've drawn zero. If you have drawn naturally. Three? Yes. Four? Oh, oh, yeah. How many cards do you have in your deck if you've drawn three? Like, Zero. Yes. Cable is one. Asgard is two. So how many cards are they going to have in their deck at the end of the game? Uh, so Gladiator uh, is the three eight blank. Gotcha. Gotcha. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Yeah, was not paying attention to that at all. And um, see, like, I guess. Go ahead. Not for long. So why does that change the positioning of Hope Summers? I understand not playing Gladiator. Because if I play Hope Summers to the left and they don't play on it, I actually win it. Okay, so you were looking to lose it so that your gladiator is better. I wasn't looking to lose it. I was like, oh, I can actually be fine losing it because if they invest into it, like my intention was if they play anything on it, I'm going to lose it anyway. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. might as well take a head start on other lanes. While, worst case, it still gives me a 3-8, no risk. Mm -hmm, okay. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That makes sense. Thank you wanted them to have the draw, yep. And this is what's important. It's actually the exact same thing. Here, we had a lot of discussions, but I tried to find a reason in the fact categories, which was resources available. If possible, we always try to find a reason in this category. Because these, this one can betray us. Mm -hmm. And there's another reason. And this one is super sneaky and only works in Conquest. It's this one. Because if I give them more cards, what is likely to happen in round one of Conquest? You're going to play them and you'll learn. Exactly. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, smart. I can, have, I can potentially know the entire deck for one cube. So I could exchange the information of tell me not only your archetype, tell me your tech cards, tell me everything about it. I'll give you one cube. And before the start of this turn, now it's much easier because we've seen Black Knight and Blade. But where is it? Here, at this point in the video, where I'm making my choice of where to play my cards, I still have no idea what they're playing. Because Zabu and Hope Summers, I'm like, yeah, cool. 12 decks left. And uh, War Machine is the new card, so who knows? Uh, all right. Mm. Yeah, so I guess, yeah, the question is, what is your objective with each play? Are you trying to win a lane, right? Are you trying to block them from doing something? Or right now, are you just trying to get them to cycle through their deck and see as much as you can for one cube? Yeah, because yeah, as Bishop this... said... I don't have my mm -hmm. finishers. I'm a Silver Surfer yep. deck without Surfer, without Absorbing Men, without Shang-Chi, when I know they've, they're probably going to play big cards. So 
I kind of abandoned the idea of winning this one, to be honest, already. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So now I'm just trying to make the cube I'm going to lose as, worth as much as possible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's worth more if I lose Asgard. Amazing. Genuinely, that's very good. That's very impressive. I don't know if there's anything more to watch in round one, but... I guess my question would be in at this point, um, out of curiosity, how much more do you give away? Oh, well, again, there you go. You give away it all. This, <laughs> I this, mean, if you don't, this might be a big mistake on my end. Gotcha. Like maybe, Killmonger was a bad idea to reveal, but there is a chance, a slight chance. So right now in my deck, there are four cards left. So I have twenty five percent mm -hmm. chance to draw Surfer. And the thing is, mm -hmm. they discarded Magneto, they don't have access to War Machine, and I killed their Ghost Rider. So mm -hmm. their deck isn't actually that good. Mm -hmm. So at this point in the game, I'm like, wait, can I steal this? The problem is it's still only for one cube, and because you can, if you have priority, Killmonger away their Black Knight before they can drop Sif, it is nice to hold back that you have Killmonger. Well, they played Black Knight and Blade, so the, the Ebony, the Ebony uh, Blade is already... Yeah, they have a 3 yeah. Oh, yeah, but I mean for, like, future rounds. Like, if they don't yet know you have Killmonger, they might, like, be a little bit slow but... to drop a Sif. They might drop a Hope first um, and plant a Sif on turn four, and you catch them with Killmonger. In the end, I decide not to reveal the Killmonger, but I still decide oh, to play it because I feel like there's a shot at winning this. And I'm very, very happy because they actually played the Bunny Blade on the lane that I decided to just give up. <laughs> but my hand still sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got my tree 8 at least. Yeah. yeah. The problem is I didn't win my bet, which was draw Surfer so you can actually leverage that Brute. Mm -hmm. So, now, the last question of round one, and then we'll go a little faster in the next rounds. Do we play it or do we retreat? Retreat. Okay, why? Yeah, it's retreat. Oh, actually, like, right now okay, you have... does anyone oh. want to say another answer than retreat before we listen to the argument? No, retreat sounds good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. The only other benefit I would imagine playing through is, and I don't know this list by heart, would be: is there another? Is there another reveal card? Uh, you know, uh, if they're, do they run Hella or not? Do they run something else to pull cards back from? That would maybe be the only benefit to know. I will play it. It's only two cubes. Oh, it's not two cubes. It's one. Oh, I'm paying one no matter what. It's one more. Oh, yeah. Okay, so Judai plays it. I retreat, yeah. All right. So, let's hear the arguments for retreating. Right now, this is only worth, you know, if whoever wins this, if you don't retreat, it's two cubes. Great. You're competing for 10. And what you have right now is an information asymmetry. You basically know most of their deck. Um, they still don't know exactly which counter cards you have. Um, why not preserve that mystery for more cubes down the road? Like, is it that important to win two cubes right now? You're going into 10-8 next round, and you have the equal information. Well, reasonably, I would agree with that. But think about the fact that I could just play Gladiator and War Machine, and I'm still not showing any counter cards. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, showing that you've got um, War Machine, I think, would be bad because right now you look mine. like they know Surfer. It is. Ah, yeah, that's right, that's right, yeah. They know they have War Machine, I hope. Yeah. No, fair, 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 right, right. I, I think the um, benefit of a retreat that I would count on is the life numbers. 
Okay. Right now, I mean, being down two versus being down one, it, when you play out the number of possible rounds, having that extra life allows you, it, it changes the proportions, right? So you can find yourself, you can survive. I mean, how to say it? I'm trying to say this the right way. Um, you can buy yourself an entire round by one extra life. Whereas once you go to even numbers, you can start finding yourself forced into the double ups and stuff like that. You just don't have as much room to retreat. Okay, but isn't that a bias that you think this round is 100% lost? Because what happens if I play it and I win? I think you would be lucky. But yeah. Because like... Honestly, I'm not confident I'm going to win it. The only thing they need is six points on the right. They probably win the tie. But the thing is, I've seen one, two, three, four. Uh, I've seen Ghost Rider, so that's five. I've seen War Machine, so that's six. I've seen six cards from their deck. And I can probably assume at least two or three more, like 100% there's Lady Sif. I can probably put them on Shang-Chi. My Mobius is on the board, so they can't, they can't like, double forecast me. And oh, oh. Let's say I'm bold, and I'm like, I'm putting them on Infinite plus Ebony Maw. What actually are the combination of two cards they can play? They can play Lady Sif, but they can't pair it with a forecast. They can't play Ebony Maw. Like... The only thing they can do is Lady Sif plus another tree. But that would mean they Wait, play they... three tree cost with a Zabu deck. Wait, didn't they just drop the um, uh, Ebony Blade on a Hope Summers? Like, don't they have seven True. energy going into this? They have seven. That's a fact. No. True. Yeah. So they can yeah. Lady Sif me plus play a four cost. Yeah. Yeah. Um, besides, there's one thing you might um you know they're looking at this 50 50 they probably think they've got the left they're looking at the 50 50 on the right and middle and they might try to win it they might make a mistake right we have to account for that they might just try to shang a big card you drop on shaw's lane and instead it's just gladiator immune to shang um so you are also like you know that you have kind of dicey point wise they don't know what you've got um so you might be counting on them making a miscalculation. Well, no. They just still don't know your deck. I'm counting on one big thing that is the big one we haven't discussed yet. My opponent's perspective. Let's reverse, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. We're not playing this point of view anymore. We're playing that guy point of view, okay? We're on the other side of the field. Yeah. Look at my board and tell me what deck do you expect me to play. Sure, sure. Sure, sure. Okay, so do you really think you need to beat 6 on the right? Mm -hmm. No, you have to beat 15. Mm -hmm. Alright, All right. so now that you know you have to beat 15, do you stay in this game? Mm -hmm. Oh, there's not a way that they could beat Exactly. 15. They lost, the, they lost the Magneto. I know for a fact I don't have Surfer, but from their perspective, do they know that? That's a fact for me. That's not a fact for them. For them, the fact is I have more than 50% chance to have it because I've drawn 9 out of 12. Mm -hmm. So from this point of view, I really want to go. Like, I really want to leave. But from my opponent's point of view, if they put Surfer in my hand, I think they really want to leave too. Oh, so mm -hmm. are you, you're actually, are you going to snap at this point? Like you want them to actually think you have Surfer? I don't know, but we went from everyone wants to retreat to someone just offered a snap. Um, to be fair, we did have one person say you would play it. I think it was uh, Judai, maybe? Yeah, but Judai didn't say we snap it. He said play it because it's just one cube and it's worth it. Yeah, I just play it. I want to snap. You would have snapped? No. Ah, okay. All right. So now that we covered every possibility and that we actually included yeah. the perspective part, who retreats? Who plays it and who snaps? I still play it. Uh, okay, Judah is still on play it. Let's go from top to bottom. So Bishop. Okay. Yeah, I think I, I think I retreat here. Okay, we're still on retreat. Juice box. Well, juice box can actually write it, so not for long. I'm on the snap side. Oh, wow, we went that... from leave to snap. 
Yep, yep. Snap was a good point. Yep. All right, yep. Silvermint. I I've changed too. Yep, Snap. So you're on Team Snap. Yeah. All right. So because there's there's one thing we haven't considered, right? Like if you snap here, could you could you make them nervous? Could you make them like start doubting themselves? Um, that's a nice position to be in in round one. Um, yeah, there's an advantage to snapping because if you're playing the same opponent next game. Let's get them a bit nervous. Why I would snap is a little bit different. I want to draw as much attention to me having Surfer as possible, and I think that's kind of the only way. Because if mm-hmm. they miss it, they could pretty easily... I Call Obsidian is one card if they just play that on the right and we lose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think this is what, fact, what... Oh, go on. No, please, 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 please. I, I'd like to see this from a point of view of like, okay, now I already have my Halo. I don't care. Maybe as much. But this is game five, right? This is game five. I've first fought four hard games to get here. Uh, you know, am I going to throw the dice on this? I'm, I'm just like to, I think, putting the perspective of that. I'm, I'm impressed if somebody snaps on this one. I mean, maybe that, you know, but I think most, I just imagine most people are like, I'm going to take the cube loss. I don't have Surfer. I'm going to back off and I'm going to try to win the five. I'm trying to win my tier five game. So I'm curious to see I that. Th- yeah, okay. I think there's an advantage to snapping here because um, you, they would probably think, given what the deck you have is, um, that you've got Surfer. You want them to think that's why you're snapping. You're trying to conceal that you have a different counter, Shang. Um, because right now, nobody would look at your deck and a snap and think, Oh, he's secretly holding on to Shang for later. They would just think you're a traditional Surfer deck. Let's lean into that. I mean, I have seven energy. I could all like Surfer and Absorbing Man. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and then suddenly the right isn't like, oh, I need six. It's like, oh, I need 25. Yeah. All right. And that's something that Bishop brought up that I really think we missed in the first part. It's behavior. Mm-hmm. We can learn a ton from our opponent behavior. The question is... Mm-hmm. Do I want to learn that behavior? Like, what's the cost of learning that behavior? Because I snap, all right? Imagine, I snap, it costs me four cube, but I learned a lot about my opponent. I learned they're going to stay. I learned they're, gonna, uh, they're willing to take the risk. The problem is, mm-hmm. I have six life, they have ten. So now they're in the perfect situation to actually take risks. Mm-hmm. So I just created the perfect situation for the mindset they are into. Mm-hmm. All right, let's well, I, oh. go ahead, not for long. I also think if you play Gladiator and Killmonger, outside of exactly the card call, which is not a guarantee they have in their list, there's not a lot of ways that you can actually lose the right location. Yes. We just went through everything else they could have. So I think the, on the snapping point, you're also just in favor of winning, even without the bluff. Yes, but that forces me to reveal Killmonger as well, which might be something I want to hide. But yeah, you're right. But that would be worth four cubes. True. I don't think I snapped, but I think I played it. No, that's the play. I'm just curious, yeah. I don't know the deck. I'm not familiar with the, Black, the new Black Knight deck, so I'm a little... I don't know what big ends they have. They have something else. If they run Hella or whatever. But... Um, because I would say right now, since you have priority, right? Yes. If they run Shang, They're I Shang. mean, with your Gladiator, you do well. You do well. But if you didn't have, if you, if if I wasn't sure if you had Gladiator, I was like, well, you have Sebastian Shaw. If you run, if you um, Surfer slash Absorbing Man, so, so, you know, Shaw like dies to Killmonger plus something else. So, but that's all. That's the way I kind of see it. But you know, I probably wouldn't have snapped onto this. They had what was needed. Oh. And the thing here is they're we need like if we knew their deck, we knew exactly what was in their hand because there was zero cards in the deck. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, but well, you, well in the original thought, in the on turn one, you know, I think uh Silverman put him on call. There was a couple, you know, it was either Call or Crossbones, so I guess Crossbones would a lot wouldn't have won, but you know, Crossbones was only playable on the lane I didn't care about. 
Yeah. So. But all right, like, but I'm happy because I feel like this game was textbook perspective. Literally, mm-hmm. we went through every single decision, and a lot of people changed their mind a couple times. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's keep it going, because this game gets interesting. <laughs> this, by the way, is a really cool exercise. I love this. Yeah, I would, this is a, you know, with the video, Dan, I really think this, this is a really good um, thought, you know, thought exercise. All right, mm-hmm. here. Why didn't I snap? Why didn't you snap? I mean, I have one, two surfer. What more am I asking? Um, Killmonger? Group? Okay, who would snap turn one this hand? Let's say it this way. Mm-hmm. Because now I know they're literally their entire deck. Yeah, but you don't know what they've drawn. Um, uh, well, I've seen a ton because I've also seen their discard. I've also seen the fact that Magneto and Infinite are their six costs. Uh, so I think like at this point in the game, I probably have like 10 cards and... I mean, I have a doubt. Do they run shang or not? That's about it. Yeah. Yeah, but, like, we don't yet know what they do with their cards, right? Like, so, like, are they going to be clever and maybe stack, like, an Ebony Blade on the Ghost Rider? Like, are they, are they going to wait to see where you brood and Shaw and just come over the top? Um, are they going to try to spread their points? Like, right now, it'd be very costly to snap because um, you don't yet know what they do with the cards. You just know the cards they have. Well, you lack both counters, right? You lack Mobius and you lack Killmonger to shut them down. Well, my main reason uh, for not snapping was if spider Ham touches Infinite, I'm toast. Oh, fair. Mm. Okay, that's getting interesting, but you don't yet have hope. You always have hope. So for me. Ah, but what, oh what, my god. Why do I want hope specifically here? Oof. Well, because you've got Surfer and Absorbing Man. That could be a fun turn six. Oh. Interesting. Interesting, yeah. Yeah. Ew. Oh, oh. The absorbing man? <laughs> That's fine. Absorbing man, the gladiator against the deck with yeah, infinite. A little four. I'm kidding. You just get like a little four out of it. Okay, that's smart. That's smart. That's good. Oh, that was a nice. Well, a nice pull. Well, I'm not really happy about their Ebonima being like. Yep. Yep. Hard because I killed the war machine. Mhm. Mhm. Hmm. This is, this is... All right. Okay. That um, was a big question. Talk. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Who would Shang Chi now, and who would wait? I would wait because we don't know if they're going to have turn five yet. Let's let's do the writing thing. Oh, sh- sorry. I want to well, see what everyone wait? thinks. Yeah, but if you have a reasoning with it, of course, include it. So do you shang chi their coal right now, or do you keep it? Can you get to seven? You don't have a you don't have any cost reduction. All right, is everyone ready to post? I'm ready. Ready. Yeah. All right, and post. Okay, so we have one Shang now, one Shang now, three. Okay, Silver Mint and Nard for longer just a team at this point. <laughs> <laughs> We've been practicing We've been for the last couple of last hours. hours. <laughs> All right, so Team Shang now. I have, because you have Absorbing Man from Juice Box, 
And because you can't use a forecast next turn from Judai. All right. Bishop, did you have a different argument or do you join these two? So, uh, yeah, I think, I think the way I looked at it is that you don't have, you can always get back out, but you don't have anything. I mean, you, you don't have anything else really except for cable and that's probably a loss. And then you have absorbing man. So I think I'm kind of caught in both, right? When else are you going to use it? And you're so they can play if they skip five they can play what maybe i don't know did this i don't does this deck run um she hulk but they're uh, no. if, no. if they're they doesn't run she hulk if they run it so, you have zero information about it about it yeah so you know they have more of anyways you don't have anything else to do and if you don't do this now when are you going to do it and you still have a chance to get away from the whole thing if if they play something that surprises you. But yeah, I just think you're... I don't think you lose anything by doing it now. Okay. Team Don't shang -Chi. Do you have a counter for the arguments that Team shang -Chi brought up? Let's see. So they've lost their um, War Machine. Um, we know that they still are running naturally um, some big cards, like a Magneto here um, could really screw you up. It's going to pull every single card to a certain lane. Yeah, because um, Symbiote is a forecast. Exactly. Um, so we know that they have, especially because you don't have a lot of things to target. Like, let's say right now you Cable and then Silver Surfer, and then next turn you're going to, like, Absorbing Man. Yeah, but you still have very small cards, very few targets for your Surfer Absorbing Man. Um, and I also think there's just a cost to revealing that you have Shang because it's not always an auto-include in a Surfer deck. That's the big one that I would have liked to see on the Don Chang, is they don't know I run it yet. So, yeah. revealing Shang and still losing the game hurts so much. Yep. And, yep, yep. But I do agree, like, if I don't Shang now, it's what, Cable Surfer? If, if that, yeah. I mean, yeah. there's nothing yeah. else but Cable Surfer. That's yeah, what I thought I think you were going to Actually, yeah. there's one other play that nobody brought up. That I would have loved if someone brought it up. Which is... Oh, wait. Did I actually do it? No, I'm an idiot. It doesn't work. Mobius is the last card. Because we could have tried Absorbing Man on the left, and if we bring a big one, they can't move their cards, and we can just shank sheet the lane on turns. Yeah. I, I think if you had a way to, if you had a hope on the board, if you had a way to increase your cost, I mean, you're, you know, I increase your hope energy. On the board, I just cable surfer behind it, and next turn I just absorbing it and shank. Right, right. I think that's the reason I would shank now, is because there's just no other place to go. But I see what you're saying about holding it back, just for the information. In which case, then, okay, uh, you know, anyone from either team change their mind? No. No. I can see for holding it back the information. I can see the own benefit of holding back okay, the but information. Did you change your mind? Game is over. Or are you still playing it? I'm probably still playing it at this point. Okay. Let's see what I did. Which I have no idea if it's correct. All right, so here there's one. There's a big reason why I did this. I don't know if it's a good reason, but can anyone guess why I picked this line? Because yeah. the next yeah. one would be Magneto to your left. Uh, if because they play you still Magneto, have the option that you can change. Wait, like, I can't hear everyone at the same time. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Because I, I, I think that if, if they were to play Magneto onto lane one, you can still shang both Call and Magneto. Well, they can't play Magneto now. Turn five. No, but I'm on, on, on six, but... Like... Yeah, I could. Okay, that's a yeah. possibility. I wouldn't see why would they do that, but yes. Um, I would just say because you still have a way to win the left, which is you've got a large right. point card there, and you've got Shang. 
which could take away their call. Um, so let's build points in it because you got to win two lanes, right? Yes. Yeah. That was kind of my problem. My big problem with that Shang Chi on the left is I'm ahead here, but I'm so far behind on every other lane, and they are the points deck in that scenario. Like if I had a brood or like a lot of tree costs on the board, I'd be like, okay, I can impact every lane. But I can't really impact every lane. I can only impact one lane at a time. So if I shang -Chi now, next turn I'm like forced to play whatever tree cost I drop plus Surfer and hope it's enough. Yep. And there's another reason why I did this is because we're still early in the match. And I don't know if they play shang -Chi, So I just give them a reason to show me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, well, you have one card. <laughs> this is interesting. All right, same thing. Yep. So you saw what I did. But who plays Shang-Chi? Yeah. Who plays Absorbing Man here? I play Shang-Chi. Shang 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 yeah. Shang Shang. Okay, why? Yep. I feel like they're going to make Nito last turn and just grab Gladiator anywhere. Okay. I think, yeah, over, like, you're just trying to win. Um, You've... You've got a Absorbing decent champ on the right. On the left. Yeah. But if they're running Shang, um, no, it doesn't. Well, if they're running Shang, I'm not winning the left either. Because they just Shang left. And they're at 7, I'm at three, yeah. Yeah. If they're running Shang, I'm losing. I'm just paying a cube to know if they're running Shang. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, but okay, so... Like, for example, Juicebox is saying hide Absorbing Man. What's more valuable to hide, Shang-Chi or Absorbing Man? Probably Shang-Chi. Absorbing Man is almost always included in the deck, but um, often it's, it's complicated. I think um, I'm not sure hiding Shang is as important anymore because at least some of their big targets, like the Ebony Blade, are immune to Shang. Um, you don't want them to know how high you can come on certain lanes. Maybe Absorbing Man is better to protect. I'm of the mind it's more points in that left lane. And so if they do play a Sif or something else, you'll still win. Yes, th this is better against point spread. Yes. Mm -hmm. Doesn't Magneto, does Magneto take, it's, it's last in, right? No, it's completely random. Oh, okay. I thought it was, uh, okay. Oh, well, that would have worked. Hey, there's um, one, two, three, four, five, six people in the chat right now. Hey, hello, get marked. Hello, hello. So today we're working on perspective. <laughs> no. Oh. They're on Shang, by the way. All right. So we just exchanged Shangs. Exchanged. Yep. Exchanged. Ex yep. Extremely difficult to say. Like th this could be a drama class where they try to make you say like exchanged. Mm -hmm. changed. <laughs> Some changed. Yeah. Oh, did you Ooh. did you just pass on Spider Ham? Yes. Why? You're afraid uh, of Infinite? Uh, yeah. Well, I was afraid of Infinite last game, and I slammed it like a moron, so... <laughs> Do you think I just changed my mind and remembered they played Infinite, or is there another reason? Um, um, you, could use it, you could use it in turn 4 with Hope as well. Yes. Yeah. Last game, I didn't yeah. have Hope Summers in hand. Yes. Yeah. Plus, you don't need the information as urgently. Um, let's represent that you don't have it. That's not true, because most of the cards I want to kill are early. I want to kill Zabu, I want to kill Hope Summers, and that kind of okay. stuff. And yeah. playing Spider-Ham on turn 4 probably removes the possibility of that happening. So you just not the risk of, Doesn't that also go risk your piece of hitting Infinite? <laughs> but. Doesn't... what? Does it, well, if you but, play the way you play Spider-Ham, doesn't that increase the risk you're playing Infinite? Or you're hitting Infinite? 
Yeah, it's more yeah, like a regular war machine like... deck. That's true. Yeah. Well, we right. know they're running infinite. Yeah. They discarded in game one. Yeah. Oh, he means hit, though. Like, you know, it's more playable, but, like, it's also playable with uh, War Machine. Yeah, it is, yeah. but they need to have yeah. everything. That's right. Um, no... My goodness, okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now we on. have to talk about perspective. <laughs> oh. Okay, so I'm going to spit it out and... Get also oh, get marked just so you know when I'm asking a question like an open question the goal is you type the answer in the team coaching chat and you only send it when I say so so everyone sends it at the same time so we don't influence each other got it all right so I'll lay down the situation I'll actually tell the facts and everything because I want to know what people think I've lost two games already I'm four, I'm six to ten, so we have established that probably their deck has a higher potential than mine, considering mm -hmm. I'm behind, and I'm now drawing from the maybe superior deck, should I snap? And you want us to type it? Yes. Wu snaps right now, Wu doesn't snap. Wu retreats. But, I mean, if you retweet before they snap, there's, there's a lot of explaining to do. All right, I just want to see snap, no snap for now. Let's just make the teams and just not for long in Silverman. Please this stop is, this DMing This is a you snap? Other. Yeah, would you snap this situation right now? And everyone sent. <laughs> they were going to send. Oh, send. I, saw, I saw Bishop send, so I decided to send too. <laughs> oh, sorry, my bad. It's all right. It's all right. I, I, uh, well, Judah, you get to answer. Like you get to pick your team. And uh, not for long. And Silvermint are not in the same team. All right. Actually, Silvermint, you're alone on Team Snap, so you get to talk first. Unless Judah, do you want to join Team Snap or not? No. Okay, so Silvermint, you're definitely alone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, all right. It's so, Be convincing. Okay. We'll send cards. We'll send cards. Okay. So first of all, somebody's gonna draw um, Killmonger. Um, if it's you, that's great. You can hit Ebony Maw. If it's them, they can't play it because they'll hit their Ebony Maw. So they start getting paralyzed in some of the cards they can draw. Also, you still have Cable, um, so you can get some of your cards back, and you actually have a choice of whether or not to play Surfer or discard. Um, you still have your really nice energy curve in front of you. Um, yeah, they probably are going to get Surfer, but, like, um, you might get their War Machine. Like, um, I think this is this is upside. Okay, there's... Wait, does it work like that? Does Cable still grab your deck, even though... No, I, um, I, draw, I draw from their deck. Yeah, yeah it's their deck, right? Good. But there's one I argument so. that I really like for snapping. I don't actually remember what I did. Um, what is usually the best card to buff with Surfer? Rude? Yeah. Rude. Where is it right now? You yeah. have it. So if they Their draw Surfer, not as good. What's, what's the risk for me? Like, take my deck. I have the two best cards in it, which is Hope Summers and Brute. You can't double tree me, and you can't buff Brute. Yeah. Okay. And there's another reason Plus, why I like World World a lot. It's it makes Spider Ham so much more reliable because now if Infinite is in the deck, I have zero chance of hitting it. Mm -hmm. So we went from I hope I don't hit it to well they only drew four cards before World World happened, so now it's like a thirty three percent chance I actually touch it. Mm -hmm. All right, team yeah. no team no snap. Who wants to try and change Silverman's mind? <laughs> Who goes against Silvermint? It's not gonna be five on one. You you need to you need to send one person. Pick your champion. Yes, exactly. Pick your champion. <laughs> I'm just gonna say I'm gonna bow out from this because I didn't see the other 
parts of this conquest match, so I have no idea what the other deck even looks like. So the other we deck is... not we choose we choose bishop. We choose bishop. Okay, but the uh, other... this is not for long. It's obviously not for long here. Yeah, not for long is the one who betrayed me. So let's let's see it. <laughs> yeah, the, the showdown full but of betrayal. Get, get Merc. So their deck is a War Machine Black Knight deck. So basically, at this point, we know all their cards. So they're playing Ebony Maw, Black Knight, Blade, Zabu, Lady Sif, Hope Summers, Ghost Rider, Shang Chi, Call Obsidian, War Machine, Magneto Infinite. I, I I guess one of the reasons I would choose not snap is maybe because of this. They are so far ahead um, that yes, you could win one cube, but I also see that if they're really if they're staring at their hand going like this is garbage in my hand, they'll just retreat. Whereas if you play it out, maybe you can get you can get two or push them into a better pres- place later on. Okay, um, right. Then, like you just said, push them to a better place later on. Right now, the situation is they have seven up on me and I have zero chance of getting my Killmonger. Yeah, I, yeah. I, again, I think, I think if, if you feel, I mean, if you're feeling that, that strong, then I would hang. But I would just wait but, and see what I pulled from their hand. But. There's also an advantage where they might think like, okay, he's down four cubes. He might just be snapping aggressively because he's getting desperate to win. Um, I bet I can outplay this person, so I'm going to stay in. Um, they might have the wrong perspective on why you're snapping. Yes. They might have, like, because the perspective of why would someone snap the situation, it can be so many different things. It can be they have all they need in their hand already, so they don't care what they give me. Because literally, if my hand is Brood, Absorbing, and Surfer, you can take the rest of the deck. I don't give a damn. <laughs> um... Two, it's an opportunity for me to catch up on the four cubes I lost in the first game. Three, Mm -hmm. and that's the big one that nobody mentioned. At this point in the game, who knows the entire deck of their opponent? Oh, oh, you want them to retreat now because the more cards they draw, the more they're seeing of your deck. Yes. Right now, I'm I'm so far ahead in the information war that if it stayed this way... They only know like eight or nine of my cards. I know they're twelve. I don't need that info. Oh, that's so clever. Oh my god. Wait. Okay. Mm-hmm. The only card they haven't seen is Absorbing Man. Really? I've I've shown that much. Actually, yes. Yep. I think so. Yeah, you did. You played everything else because you played Killmonger the first game. True. I actually <laughs> tried it the first game. Yes. So that would be that would have been much better if I actually retreated the first game. Then we can't hear you. Okay. Yeah, he's hot shot. I think <laughs> we completely changed Goose Box perspective. <laughs> okay. I'm okay. snapping. Wow. All right, let's see what happens. Yeah, I'll snap because I'm a coward. Okay. <laughs> By the way, everyone is like, "Oh, Daniel convinced us. Daniel hasn't slept in a few days, so like, don't listen to me." <laughs> well, that's that's interesting. Oh. This is where I oh. will snap. <laughs> Politely exchanging hope summers? Okay, so juice box. Oh. That's actually a really interesting one, because juice box just sent Knight, Blade, and Prophet. What does that do? I'm exchanging a 410 to create a 410? Gotta have the one drop in it, though. I mean, Blade, Black Knight, and Spider Ham. How many? How many one drops do you need? I'm not following. You can't forget about the ham. He's the ham. It's like. <laughs> And also, there's another thing, is there would have been an upside to getting the Ebony Blade if I was interested in the ingoing ability, because Call Obsidian gets Shang-Chi, Ebony Blade doesn't. 
but look at the locations. Yeah. I was thinking Zabu Night Blade, Tree Drop Blade on 6 with Brood. Uh, okay, uh, but your. Wait, did I know I had Zabu? Where is Zabu here? No, you just, you just threw it. No, he's your draw. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but then you're on turn 4. You said. You said Night Blade on turn 3. We haven't seen what I do on turn 4. In this situation, yeah. I'm... Now there's the Hope Summer, so these one costs are like really good. They also give me energy. Ah, okay. Then because you only said Night Blade, I thought you, ta you, you were talking on turn 3, my bad. All right, let's keep it rolling. Yeah, I wouldn't actually um, discard yet. I would use the spider hemp. Okay, why? Uh, because you already have a place you can drop uh, Call Obsidian, and you have, um, uh, you're going to have lots of energy. Um, let's see. That's really nice of them, by the way. Just never do that, please. Yeah. Never what, sir? Play your Koei on Weird Worth. Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm... Yeah. They wanted you to catch up. <laughs> they wanted <laughs> me to catch up. <laughs> nice of them. A bit insulting, but nice. It's the Marvel Snap uh, equivalent of like letting the opponent get up off the ground after you've knocked them down. Then did he, you snap or he snapped? I think I snapped. I hope I did. Yeah. How did they go forward in this video by clicking backward? Oh, it was getting my. Yeah, I'm snapping. Oh, yeah. Good. I mean, I'm ahead. They're just Okoye and gave me points. Uh, I need to be respectful eventually. That's a great thing. points again. Yeah. So this is interesting. Like, they can't play their Killmonger. Um, yeah, I would definitely put Machine on the right. Yeah. Yeah, but here, yep. uh, actually, I don't know if it's a mistake, but there's one thing I did which I really don't like. Close the light. Yeah, close the light. You feel that mid? It's not filling mid because I think I had to. I wanted to get the extra energy, and I'm literally telling them if you focus in the middle. Oh, you closed off a brood spot. Um, exactly. Like yeah, I'm yeah. brood so much worse. It's yeah. the only card I have in my hand, so it's the only fact I know about turn six, and I made it worse. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yep. Oh. Oh, interesting. I okay, who it. wants to discuss this one? Oh, that's so good. I, I thought you had I, to sit on the left. But, yeah, go ahead. I feel you should focus more exactly on what you're doing because I, I feel they could win mid just with, like, it's only one point, and then they need to focus on retaining left. Like, Ebony Maw is not that strong. With like you have four power to to their seven, it's only three. So what cards do we think they have right now? Like right. what are they gonna play? They've got Surfer maybe. We don't know what they're holding on to. They have Shaw. Yeah. They could have Shaw, Gladiator, Absorbing Man, right? Yeah. We've gotta assume uh they're gonna win mid. Um Yeah, but the question isn't do they win mid? It's how much yeah. does it cost to win mid? Yeah. Uh, you can just surf for that. You win, they they win by two points. They win surf by two points. They all left mm -hmm. or right. Yeah. Okay, but so if they play surfer, I don't really care. I mean. No, they have no, 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 no,
They can play Surfer off-site, so they can do Shaw Surfer. Yeah. 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 Can. So the f- surprise for me was that you played Brood We're on the zip lane this instead of trying to, like, hedge bets and play Brood on the right. Um, but, yeah, all they have to do is play Surfer on, like, the left, um, and they're already winning Weird World. So it is very easy for them to stack points on the right. I, I mean, if they, were, if they play... Either of card left or right, they I mean based on what you played, right? They win. So I think it's because like if gladiators eight, if as long as they don't draw something out of their own deck, that's dangerous. Maybe they know that you know they're more worried about what do you call it? I mean, what if they're worried about like pulling the infinite oh. out of their deck? Are you hoping that they actually play um, gladiator and draw a card for you on the right? No, but I'm no, ho- then I'm hoping they quit the right. And I'm hoping they quit the right because of this. I'm hoping they quit the right because in the previous game, they played the lane that was the strongest for them. Mm. Yeah, that's what I was not thinking, but I was coming with that logic. Like, I'm just basing my reasoning on they're not going wide. They're going tall. So I'm just trying to match them going tall. Uh-huh. But yeah, that spider ham was really, really bad. You can actually see it at my head on the camera. I'm like, I don't want to be in this game. Yeah. Did you, by the way, just miss it? or? Yeah, I mean, I recognize it. Yeah. I think it was a mistake. But I think the mistake no, was I... Ebony Blade in the... I think it was the problem was the blade in the middle. I shouldn't have played either Blade or Zebu in the middle. I didn't need two energy, but I knew I needed to play the Ebony Blade in the middle because otherwise it would get Shang-Chi and both decks are playing Shang-Chi. So I think yeah. my mistake is more like this blade or this... Well, this blade because the Zebu is an ongoing. So this blade should be on the right. They retreated? Yes. <laughs> Did you see your, your like br- your exhale there? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh, you're really. Yeah. You know, he puffed his cheeks and everything. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> were you just like a couple seconds away from retreating yourself, or were you in? No, I wasn't. Okay. All right. All right. Back to him. Oh, no, nice. No, no, no. Okay. okay. Oh, so, oh. Who's snapping the spider ham Hope summers? Um, I'm snapping because you have a chance of winning. Like, all you need to do is draw... Oh, wait. Or this, sorry, this is a question yes. we're supposed to type. Sorry. My bad. Very important info to consider. We're on round four. Hmm. That's probably the most important fact of all this. Bishop, stop yeah, Bishop sending it again. I was going to make a joke, too. <laughs> Alright, so Bishop gave his opinion. Is everyone else ready? Um, just about. Alright. Okay, Jude, I just went for it. Just everyone go for it. What can I say? No, oh, sorry, I thought we're all sending <laughs> I was um somebody somebody came to, I, I was just typing somebody interrupted me so I had to like get out there so I just sent but yeah ah okay what about filling center easily Do you already isn't know this going to be one... oh sorry I just saw the white glow and I thought it was going to be the one where you get um white I didn't look too closely nope oh never oh, mind never mind close. I thought it was the one where you get like three extra energy per turn um I just saw the white glow and assumed. Yeah, white room. Yeah, never mind about that. I thought it was two because the silver meant, so you tricked me. <laughs> Aha! Perspective! I told you, like, five minutes ago, I didn't sleep, I'm an idiot. <laughs> gotcha. Alright, so everyone is on Snap. I think. Literally everyone. Yes. Yeah. Alright, did I Snap? Didn't Snap. I don't know why. Huh. 
Oh, wow. You have to cool. snap here. You can still snap there. Oh, yeah. Okay. Come on, snap! Oh my god. I'm so bad when I play on YouTube. But I agree, I should have snapped. Yeah, brood right and snap, right? Okay. They snapped? I snapped? Wait, what? My mouse wasn't on. I think they snapped. Dan, is this like your brother playing, or? <laughs> have you seen this round? I do too many things. Sure. Death snap with his uh, black knight and brood to feel killed. Okay. But he can't play both. Are they just counting on Magneto here? Because here they have a reason to snap, which is they have Zabu, and actually Wakanda is a hell of a location for them. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was nervous about above. Um, you can't use Shang. But also they have War Machine, so they have two closed locations. And, right. yeah. So yeah, I have a nutty hand. But the locations are so good for their deck. Yeah. I'm just saying you have the Black Knights, you can almost feel Kiln plus Surfer and Abs Man. Yes, I can, Juice Box, but what, am I, what else am I winning except Kiln if I do that? So I guess at this point, with what's been shown and you having not snapped and then them now snapping, isn't it just easier to just retreat on this, given what you have? In wow, front you want to? We we went from snap to retreat. Okay. In, well, the, in the why do we want to retreat here? What's the logic behind let's retreat? Sorry. Uh, I just want to... logic being that you have two locations that are like four war machine. Zabu's out already, and you have a location that already can't be destroyed. We don't know that they drew War Machine. It's correct, but the same thing, the argument goes both ways. Coin toss. Ooh. Um, so um, there is a reason to snap, to retreat, which is we're on round four. So theoretically, yeah, next this retreat is free for me. Whereas yeah. next time, it's going to be double anti now. And like playing Brood on, on Kiln is it like it's a good play if it wasn't a War Machine deck. Mm -hmm. Of course, if they're not a War Machine deck, we're not having this discussion at all. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's see. We're staying. Oh, the bluff. This gladiator oh, this is, is interesting. terrible on these locations. Wow. wow. Wait, so that's interesting. Like, you want them to know that... Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, there's still I guess if it's one card four, they yeah. haven't seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if we count, so let's count, imagine. So I have 9, 9 plus 6 is 15, no, 9 plus 8 is 17, plus 8 it's 25. How much is big plus infinite? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm staying. It's because I really yeah. want them to war machine infinite that kill. Yeah, the only question I have is why show that you drew the Black Knight? You know, maybe they're still hoping they'll draw it or something. Now they know what you got from the cable, and it gives them information about their deck. Uh, what was the reasoning? Is there a reasoning? Apart from top deck Okoye next turn? There's not really a reason to play it. You just want to fill it up so they don't um, grab all your three costs and Magneto left? Oh, you know, to try to, try oh, to sneak a win? That's, that's, um, a good point. that's a really good point. Well, if, if I'm going Absorbing Men on turn 6, which, like, the, the plan seems to be, like... Because the plan seems to be Surfer into Absorbing Men. And actually, this Black Knight, if I top deck Ope Summers, is actually stronger in my hand. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Let's see.
Oof. They have 17. That's nice. I can beat that. The question is, how the hell do I win the other lanes? Yeah, okay. Interesting. Can you pause right. for a sec? All right, all right. Who's staying? Yeah. Yeah. Who's playing it? This is the big one. Um. So for now, let's do... So I'm going to take that back. Let's do just stay or, stay or leave. Okay. And you're not clicking enter, right, Bishop? Um, let's see what we got here. This is... Wait, I didn't warm machine. Oh, they did warm machine. Sorry. This is tricky. This is tricky. Um, they only have. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay. Oh, this is a tough one. So for now, I just want to see stay or leave, and then we'll go through arguments. I know what I did precisely. And I know exactly why I did it, and that's why I did it so fast. But so ready when you tell us. All right, let's send it. So I got one stay, one leave. <laughs> Gets more. Oh like, it. why are we still in this? <laughs> <laughs> not for long is leave. We're not beating Magneto. Okay. Everyone is on leave. Silver Mint um, and okay. Juice Box are on stay. All right, team stay. You go first. Juice Box, do you want to take it? Well, they can't talk. They can only write. So they can write while you talk. Okay. Um, all right. <laughs> so while you talk. You've, you've told us that they like to play big. Um, they think you probably, I mean, maybe they know you have a throwing man, maybe they don't, but they think they can just blow you out by maybe dropping an infinite on the right, or maybe they try to drop an infinite on the left because you've got, um, Shang and it's safe, but wherever they want to try to play infinite, um, you just have, they only have six energy. They can play one card, um, because they're a war machine deck. They're probably biased to want to play it on a lane that you can't reach. Um, you have another Absorbing Man coming. You have a Gladiator, which is a big card. Um, you can win two lanes, and it's almost like wherever they play, um, they're committing too many resources. Okay. Uh, not for long. When you say we're not beating Magneto, is there nothing we can do against Magneto? Like, 100% we lost against Magneto? Um, I'm looking at it more. I don't... I think there's a couple of lines that we can win against Magneto. I did bad math on my right lane. Okay, so what was your original idea? They just play Magneto where? Um, mid. Okay, but if they play Magneto mid, and we play Absorbing Man left, what's the problem? No, I just did bad, bad math. Okay, because I, I was pretty sure I did that math during the game, and I was like, no, Magneto is not a problem. So I was curious if you spotted something I missed. So what was in? I missed what was in the blade. The blade discarded um, ebony. Ebony. I mean, oh, that's see, I missed that. I was like, they have a one drop that can go down on the right, so all they have to do is win mid or left. Okay, but we so know I they have the minute, zero so. five costs. So let's say they ebony right. more on the right. What are they doing on the other lane? Because, I mean, I go plus 8 on the right if I play Absorbing Man, so be my guest, play well, Ebony Maw. I'm really happy about it. You said the blade killed Ebony Maw? Yes. All right, so then then you lose the value, right? Because it's a four cost now, or well, a three cost. Uh, yeah. The, so wait, then it's a four cost. What? Well, because no, oh, 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 sorry, I was thinking of night. That's my bad. Oh yeah. So yeah. well, if if he comes back with Ghost Rider, they have a three cost ten yeah. power. Yes. Yeah. So you can't play if if it is Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider obviously isn't an angle on right. So. Yeah. But nobody has um, seven energy, so they could play. They can't play Sif and Ghost Rider together. They, they can. They have Zabu. Um, they can. They have Zabu. He doesn't have Morbius. The only big drops they can do, obviously, are Infinite and or uh, 
Magneto, Magneto not being a problem. You win right lane. Yeah. Infinite is not a problem as long as I play Absorbing Man left, because I'm ahead on all three lanes, Infinite only takes one back. Mm -hmm. Right. So, we win if they play one single card. We lose most of the time if they play two. Except mm -hmm. if one of the two is on the right, because we beat right. Because the only way they bid us on the right, because we go plus eight, is if it's Magneto or Infinite. These are the facts. Now, let's go to perspective. What have we said all game long about our opponent's behavior? They like to go tall. They play on the strongest in them. All right, so what are we putting them on? The one big card or the two little cards? One big card. Okay, so if yeah. we're consistent, do we stay or do we leave? We stay. Okay. All right. And this is why I think I did Absorbing Man so fast. Oh, I wasn't so fast at again because it worked one. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the best cable you'll ever see in your entire life. <laughs> This is a very oh God, anxious clutching person. Clutching your head is great. <laughs> yep. Yes. I'm in his face. Though. Like he's so confident now, and then like in the game, he's like, "Well, we'll see how this goes." <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Yep, yep. This, yep. ladies and gentlemen, Infinite. is cable. Yep, yep, yep. Um, glorious. Um, the problem is, uh, and you've told us about this in many um decks or sessions we've had, right? When we have certain expected combos, sometimes your like reflex is to play the combo. They just played War Machine. There's um, a location that guards against Shang, and there's a location that can't be reached. So let's drop an Infinite and win. Um, they're not seeing that Humble Cable could win a lane. They're not counting on that Absorbing Man, which maybe they still haven't seen yet, which you held back. Um, we just don't know if they saw it during the Weird, weird World uh, round or not. But like they... They are a little bit blinded by they've got one big card that could win. Yeah. yeah. And there is one more thing. It's this. Probabilities. From the mm -hmm. start of the game, I think we can establish they are able to develop more points than I do. Yeah. So yep. most games are actually not 50-50s. Like, when yeah. we start a game, we probably do not enter a 50-50. I probably enter every game like 45-55. Or I probably enter every game like 40-60. So, when my turn 6 actually looks like a 50-50, I should take it. Because this odds are better than just queuing any other game. Like, I have a better chance of winning this than winning just a restart. <laughs> so I should take this one. It's not because it's not likely I win it, that I should not take it. It's still better odds than my other choice, which is lose two cubes and play another game. Mm -hmm. All right, let's just go to the end, because now we finally reversed it. Now we can finally mm -hmm. play to our good hand. Mm -hmm. And you've got Brood in hand. You've got Koye. Okay. We're gonna shuffle. And, oh, swap! I'm sorry. It's a swap. Oh, <laughs> you know oh, what? I, you know what I'm gonna ask. Oh, snap! <laughs> yeah, right. wait, but don't say it. Just type it. No, we're, we're gonna do it I differently know, because question. I mean, the most, is most be... people already express their feelings. Yeah. Who's not snapping? Okay. I'm not snapping. I'm not. Okay. And I can tell Silverman you why. just wants a reason to talk. That's why. Ju Juice box is just, it's not a question at this point. He's just excited to type snap in the chat whenever yes. we ask. <laughs> yes. There's a big reason. Um, they don't know that your Shaw got hit. They don't know that your Brood got hit. If my you snap Shaw, right now... My Shaw wasn't hit. My, heart, my Shaw was Oh, sorry. That, that was Koya. Koya. Right, oh, that, but they don't that know. That Shaw would like, be an if... 11. That Shaw would look Cold yeah. Obsidian in the eye. That would be so good. Yeah. Yeah, but they don't know what you have. They just know that you have a lot of cards that benefit from um, being boosted. And if you snap right now, they might retreat. 
let them stay in a little bit more. Um, try to get the, all four cubes. I like this reasoning because, yes, in most games, we snap because we win. But the thing is, yep. if I win this one, I win the entire game. Like, I literally win the conquest. Yeah, and you're going against somebody with a higher points potential. Yeah, so like, it's, it's the You don't same. want to run a lot of rounds. Exactly. It's the same thing here. My goal here isn't to take two cubes from them. My goal here is to take four from them. So the question mm -hmm. isn't, do I snap or do I retreat? The question is, do I think this snap gets me four cubes? So now let's ask mm -hmm. the question this way. Who thinks if I snap, they stay? I mean, are we typing it or saying it? No, we're typing. Basically, okay. we're just doing it based on what Bishop does. If Bishop doesn't type, if Bishop doesn't send, we don't send. <laughs> And Juicebox just does its own thing because it's really excited to be here and I'm happy about it. Honestly, love it. All right. Are we ready to send? Um, no. Um... No, I gotta write a book on this one. No, no, no. Um... <laughs> you, you can hear him swallowing and clearing his throat um, in preparation. Yeah. But... <laughs> I'm ready. Well, I guess the question okay i'm ready i mean oh no go ahead no problem. Yeah. what's your question i was just trying to figure out if they do leave and we get the two cubes and i think it's just exactly where you are um you just have to win one out of three games yes right and so in my head it doesn't really matter if they stay or leave because it's either i mean this is enough to probably win the game so if they stay that's great if they leave, one out of three games is enough that I think, at least I think, we would be able to win at least one of them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I think the same thing. I, uh, I think uh, if you, I think uh, if you uh, snap, they stay because I think they've snapped. You've snapped, and they've stayed in the past. When? Um, I think that. Yeah. I barely. But they I think you hide in the past. The biggest win was when they snapped. The last round, they snapped. Right, but I think what I'm saying is, I think they snapped because I think the game is they're tilted. The game is tilted in your favor. I mean, their favor. I think that, you know, I just think that there's a little bit of they just came from behind. I think the psychological part of this game. I, I think they stay. I think if you snap, they stay, and then it just goes to the end. Okay. Um. I have one reason to say they might stay is the Zabu. Mm -hmm. They don't have a bad And the Maw. I mean, they probably, have the, they probably have the, what do you call it, in play too, right? They probably have the, or in hand, the, um, the War Machine, probably. They probably have the War Machine. Because they mod on one, pretty, right? They haven't played Maw on one unless, they've ha unless it was the safe location. So we click and enter, or? Oh yeah, send, send, send. My bad. We we've discussed that's it that's so much that. Fair enough. So yeah. They will leave. This is the first time in the match they've been behind. They're about to lose an infinity border. They're nervous. A snap will bully them out. Okay, we have a lot of psychology going on here. Yeah, I mean, so here's the thing. They know they have the higher points potential. If you give them a round to like oh. regain themselves, they can go back to playing cool. Um. They have to be completely confident they can win it this time if they accept um, or if they stay in. Yeah. All right. So, spoiler, I didn't snap. But something is going to happen later in the round that I think means they would have left. But we never know that. And most of my hesitation every single round isn't about what to do. It's about, do I snap them? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Mm -hmm. You're running out. Your spacing is interesting. Oh. oh, what? 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 Wait, 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 wait. They just okay. discarded Black Knight on purpose? War or War Machine. Machine, I mean, sorry, on purpose, yeah. 
I don't know. This is really, really weird. But at this point, all right, same thing. Who snaps this? Because this time, if they stay, because let's say in the in the in the first snap, there was a slight chance I would actually lose the game. Because as we established, they had Zabu. Their behavior leaned to they have a really strong hand. We didn't have Surfer at the time, etc. Now we've seen War Machine go. I'm pretty sure I win this game. Right. The um, question is, do I snap it now or not? I think not now. But yeah. Yeah, I definitely think not now. Yeah. Okay, so most people would hold. Yeah. yeah. I'd say... If you snap yeah. now, someone's going to call you a boomer. Yeah. No, like, if you snap right now, right, like... It's on um, five. We're on five right now. I, I haven't played yeah, Chang-Chi. Yeah. From their perspective, I haven't played Chang-Chi yet. Yeah. yeah. But they, you, you, know they, still... you know they have it. Yeah. You still can, like win all four cubes if they stay in um but there's a chance that they finally learn their lesson about going tall um and they're preparing to do something interesting unpredictable um it's you can if you don't snap now you can always retreat and still have your two more shots at beating them Why would I retreat um, no, no i mean if like on the next turn like if they did something like really really but, but they can't do anything right i mean you're, you're, they can't play in the mall lane anymore because you watched War Machine go bye bye. They know you have Killmonger, they know oh, you have Shang-Chi, wait, wait, wait. and they that's know you have Sir Bishop. On turn five, they can Ghost Rider it. Ghost Rider what? The War Machine. Oh, on turn five, they can Ghost Rider it. Okay. I guess that's, yeah, mm -hmm. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. And then they can do something on six. Can they win with that, though? I guess that's nine. Onto the center lane. I mean, I mean if he if he, he has the power advantage now, but like he can see that if you surfer, your Shaw is, can be Shang Chi. He doesn't know that your Gladiator can be Shang Chi yet, too. But like, yeah, you also have the Killmonger. I mean, you they also know you have Killmonger, so that's even. So yeah, they have to. All right. I, I don't know. I think they. I think they leave. I think it's just. They do War Machine it and. I didn't snap, I think at this point, I didn't snap out of respect for them. Because it was like, yeah. alright, they're gonna Ghost Rider it, so now I'm in doubt. But I was pretty sure I was 100%. Hmm. Oh my god. I'm, I'm not confident. Like... Okay, yeah, why are you six. not confident? So, last question, and then we'll just watch the end of the match. Last question. Okay. What do you guys think my opponent did? First, did they stay? Did they leave? And if they stayed, what do you think was their play? Are, they, are we typing? Yes. <sighs> so, stay or leave? And if it's a stay, I want to know what's the reason you think they stayed here. It can be a bad reason. It can be they think they're going to infinite you on the left and win magically. Are we sad or no? Is everyone ready? Oh, I'm sorry. I was looking something up. I was trying to see if they played. Oh, never mind. I don't know what the play was then. Okay. Okay. Is everyone good? And... One second. One second. I gotta okay. Okay. Take there. your time. Take your time. The chat won't. The chat won't open. Yeah. The chat oh, is moving. Bishop. Open. No, yeah. It won't. I don't know why it won't. Like the the. It's glowing, but it won't light up. I don't know why that. It's because you don't chat. That's why they banned you. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Go ahead and go, because I can't get... I don't know why it's not... All right. The, it's, so, Bishop, tell us your what? answer by voice while everyone says. I, I, my vote would be that they left. Um, I, 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 without having played the, um, the Black Knight, I couldn't see what they would play to take two spots. I thought... I just don't... I didn't see a, a strong win here. Um, 
I, I had them on one card, and I don't see a, a strong win there. Okay, so... Uh, we, uh... You know, Juicebox is correct, too. I just read what he said. Oh my god, that's funny. Where, where do okay, you write? I, I, I am notorious it. for uh, opening chests and stuff like that at the end of the video. Like, oh, I said, I said that they left too. Yeah, I had the thought that the, the video goes on, that that's a fact like in the video. Is you that what he wrote? See, I'm, I'm saving my chests to open in the videos. So oh. who knows how long I lost people afterward. I'm really yeah. good at I had that, losing people time. Yeah, I, I had that information out there too, yeah. But anyways, I couldn't leave it. Couldn't open. Why wouldn't it open? I don't know why I want to open. It takes 10 it's minutes stuff. to open three chests. Man, Juicebox is excited, but you can't fool him that way. All right, so... Um, not for long. We have, a, we have a leave that's not based on video time. So your, your team, they leave. And get murked. Your team, they stay. So let's hear the arguments. No, I just think maybe he, if he full tilts Is and just says... Magneto Gimbal. Where's the Magneto? Like, wh where's the Gimbal? Yeah, I realized that after I typed it that it made no sense. That's why I edited it and wrote it there. <laughs> Okay, so... If he had extra energy, there's a gamble. If he could play something else alongside of it, but, like, no. Like, you know, depending on what three and fours he pulls, right? Like, weaken maybe your left. Okay, so Silvermint, you're alone on Team Stay, or did you change your mind, too? Um, no, I think he's going to stay because um, he's still maybe confident in the points potential. Um, um, I'm actually debating whether or not, like, he actually wins this round. Um... Yeah. What, what cards do you have him on? That's the problem I ran into. I just don't see two cards. I don't see them either. Well, they are in Zabu, but we killed their Cole. So they have like. And he Shang, never played Black Knight. They have Pryo. Yeah, they have, they have no more he, forecasts. Yeah, if you got the Black Knight out, then maybe. Okay. They took their freaking. Man, even on times two, it's long. All right, end of. Ah, uh, okay. Ooh. Mm hmm. Did we see it, or Not did we super. miss it? Yeah, yeah, they hit Ebony Maw with Spider Ham. Yeah. Okay. And at this point, oh. the good thing is no more snap, no more nothing. So now we're going by pure win rate. Oh, wow. Oh, that's unfortunate. Um, I didn't see... No, uh, draw. Didn't see what? Oh, sorry. They played Black Knight in round one, so yes. nothing got destroyed by. Hotel yeah, nobody Inferno. played on Inferno on him. Nobody yeah. hit Inferno. Yep. Okay. Oh, too bad. Interesting. Okay, so here, here. I want yeah. to offer a play. Who thinks I should Shang Chi on Hope Summers? <laughs> that is bold. Okay, I'll give my reasoning. Whatever target they put that can be shang would if they're in their right mind, they put it on Wakanda. The yeah. only time where that shang is actually valuable is now, because afterwards I'm going to be focusing on points. So, yeah. do I have any other time than just to wing shang here and just hope they call Obsidian? Yeah, this is why you play Quake. Okay. Thank, yeah. you. thank you, Bishop. Okay. Yeah, like with the Ebony Blade heading for, you know, Danger Room, with anything big heading for Wakanda, um, this is... That's a really clever, inspired play. Yeah, I guess the only question I have is, what does that do to your Gladiator? Thank you for noticing it. I do think there's better than Shang-Chi behind Ope Summers, which is Gladiator behind Ope Summers. Because clogging their Ope Summers is probably 
how I win a battle based on who puts the most points because there's Wakanda. And then you can always shine after. Yes. Yeah. And thanks for being a part oh. of it, Get Murked. Well, actually, he left. Woohoo! Oh, oh perfect. That's... That's your shank just... target. The problem is I can't shank now. No. Right. Like, I'm really annoyed so because I replay. can't shank and I can't kill Monger. But at the same time, what I did... can't play two cards behind Ope Summers. What did he discard? What did he discard? Uh... Was it... Uh... I didn't see how big it was. Was it the Infinite? It was, it was the, the Infinite, Infinite, wasn't it? Yeah, it was the Infinite. Yep. 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 We're that's in trouble. Unfortunate. Yeah, that's unfortunate. And this is kind of the problem here. The problem here is mm -hmm. there's a body blade that's just going to solo Danger Room. I know that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I already won the middle with Shang Chi. So now the situation is. Do I just have to gamble Danger Room? Meaning I need to find a way to get more than 20 points there? Or do I need to get a head start on Wakanda? But that means I don't get extra energy. And if I don't get extra energy, I can't shank she plus a turn three next turn. Plus mm -hmm. you don't have Brood or um, nope. a Surfer. So like your obvious ways to contest Danger Room are... Yeah... I mean, if this was a retreatable game, okay. I know what I would do. But this is not a retreatable game. What do we do? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Okoye, Shaw on the right. Okoye, so what, so he, on the right. Why Okoye? So, he, so what does he play on... He doesn't have... Unless he plays oh. Zabu this turn... Is he gonna... Oh, I guess he can just ma. I guess he can... I'm um, sorry. He can... Uh, yeah. Ghost Rider this turn into Danger Room. Why would he? No, you Ghost Rider. You, you just drop a Bonnie Blade on in Danger Room. Oh yeah, that's right. That's, a, yeah. Yeah, that's right. You don't have to do that. Yeah. So yeah. No, you you do Koye or something um uh on center to get the points and then. Uh, okay, I see. Well, the thing is, I still need to get a card behind Hope Summers if I want a Shang Chi. Yeah. 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 Yep. Okay. Yep. And kind of my only hope was Ray Ghost Rider is in their deck. It wasn't. So now it's Ray, they're extremely dumb. There, we're not. <laughs> Look at that perfect hand. You really think they weren't going to play it there? Did I have any other choice? Considering I could No, no, it. no. No, no, I know. You're just saying, like, pray they don't do it. Like, yeah, it's like, yeah. I have 0%. Oh, yeah. Like, the, the game gives me 0%. So the only chance I have is my opponent gives me something. That's right. That's yeah. right. At least you didn't get humiliated by getting lasered at the same time. Oh. Uh. Wait, can so I ask you a question? A question. Why not yeah. cable there? Go ahead, Bishop. <laughs> why not cable there for, um, to steal priority? Because uh, why do I need priority at this point in the game? Killmonger. Killmonger the Black Knight? Well, if they play any card, I lose priority. Like, if they play Blade, I lose it. If they play Zabu, I lose it. If they play Ebony Maw, I lose it. I guess I would have risked that. Might be. Might be. You're going against the high points potential. You want to get a Koye down if you can. Well, if Killmonger kills their potential. And the other thing is, I get Killmonger early on, but then that means I give them a Bonimo and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying I played this game perfectly. Oh, well, you got lucky here. Hmm, it's interesting. Oh, you're blocking so, so many points. Are you dodging, dodging the Magneto there? Well, 
first I need to fill it for Magneto. Also, I mean, Surfer plus Absorbing Man on this left lane is a gazillion points. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's plus 8, plus 16. That's plus 20 total. I'm at 33. Like, I even beat an Infinite. Yeah. So you have priority and they still haven't um, discarded anything, right? Exactly. Yep. I know. It's like, it's like, yeah. It's been stressing me out all game. Exactly, me too. <laughs> like, just kill it already. It's dead. Nice, okay. <laughs> huh. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I was debating where do I place them, but that's it. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Does, does it change anything? Except for priority? Well, it tells us... Um... It's just, there's an ebony moth, okay. though, right? Yeah, you need to yeah, be so seven it... and both lanes. All right, so... so if the... Yeah. Where do we play? This is the, the end, like... There's no retreat. There's no nothing. What's the play? Yeah. Type your so play. It's... Oh, Oh, type, type, type. Type your play. Um, so, um, just as a reminder, nothing has been discarded from their side, and you haven't played Gladiator. So, okay. The cards we see are, yeah, all the cards. Um, well, there was Black Knight, which uh, we killed. Oh, yeah, yeah, right, right. Black Knight. Okay. So. Um, Ooh, great. Great. People are debating. Um, oh, wait, we're sending? Um, no, we're not. But... Sorry. I... Oh, oh we're, we're not. not. It's fine. I mean, Bishop. I said, we just follow Bishop's lead. Uh... This is tricky. Um, hey, what wait, am I going for an answer? That feels so good. Okay, so yeah, there's so many different combinations here. Um, well, there's really only two. <laughs> <laughs> no, of what they might be playing. Like, I mean, oh, yeah. no, there's three. There's three yeah. things we can. Um. Okay, so we have all possibilities. All right, so juice box. While you type, why do we go abs right, ope mid? Not for long, you'll be team abs mid, ope right, and silver mint, you'll be both right. Ope mid nets more point in the mid than abs mid in the mid. Yes, we get one more point. Yeah, one more point. How does that help? <laughs> An abdomen in the mid doesn't add any more significance to me. Uh... Okay. Not for long. Why absorbing I... in mid op right? I think my real response is it really doesn't matter in my head which one goes. They just need to be split. Okay, why? Um, because 
their play most likely is really big card Ebony Maw because they haven't discarded anything with Ghost Rider, but even then that's less points. Right. And so any combination besides that is less points and not winning. And so I just need plus seven or eight in each lane. And Absman in the middle is fine because that gives plus four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, which is fine as long as there's also ten in the other lane. Or twelve, I guess. Okay. And Silvermint, why everything great? If they really want to win the center, they can. Um, you've got to, um, you know, like if, like, let's imagine they're like making a mistake, right? Let's say they drop an ebony um, in the center or something, right? Like they're trying to trip you up. They can't. Um, I'm sorry, what? They can't play an ebony. We killed the, we killed the um, black knight before it went off. Ebony Ma, not Ebony Blade. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. Ma, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so if they, you know, you're hoping to win, you know, you're going to Absorbing Man, um, you're going to win the left, you're hoping. Um, do you want to s- dilute your points and just hedge your bets, or do you want to make the strongest possible play to win the right? Um, they're seeing your point totals. They really want to try to steal Fisk Tower from you. They think that um, the center is gettable. They're going to ignore um, the right. So trust your Surfer and Absorbing Man to give you left, and in case you're wrong try to get the right, because um, maybe they'll just throw Ebony Maw there and see Okoye and say, like, ha I can steal this, and... Okay, but your play loses to Ebony Maw Metal Infinite Right. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see, so you've still got Absorbing Man that's going to buff you're at eight, um, Killmonger you're at and eight, Mobius. You're at 18 in the middle, they play Ebony Maw, they're yeah. at 19, and on yeah. the right, you go plus 6, plus 5, you go plus 11, so you're at 16 and you lose to 20 infinite. But what I'm I'm assuming they're gonna play infinite um left. I mean maybe center, right? Like left, because they know that you're um they don't know that you have absorbing man yet. Oh yeah, they saw it. Um they think they do? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. Um let's see. It's possible they just make a miscalculation and still think they can come over the top. But you can guarantee the win. You can pretty much guarantee the win by playing Absorbing Man. And I agree, Hope Summer is Absorbing Man center. I don't know if it really matters as long as you play Absorbing Man first and Hope Center second. You get one more point on the right side um, if you do the Hope to the right. And I think you win center no matter what um, because you beat Maw. And if they play Infinite on center, then it doesn't matter. But then yeah. you win the right against everything else. So I think as long as... I, I agree with not for long. As long as Absorbing Man is played first... I yeah. might take the extra point to the right side because that's the place I'm either going to I, I, I'm going to be in contention over. Okay. Plus, we haven't counted that they might make a mistake. Maybe they shang on the left and try to kill the Shaw. Like, you have priority. Oh, yeah, that, would you still win. Win. that would be particularly messy. Well, I mean, yeah, but the, the point of it is like facts versus perspectives, right? So the reason is, the reason why I did this is this is 20. And 20 and 21 doesn't change anything. We just need to beat 19. So I just went with one more point on limit. But there is one mm-hmm. thing that I didn't consider. I don't think it could have lost me the game. But it was really close. I panicked for a second. They can the blade goes What? No, they can't. Sorry. No, they can't. Oh, Ghost Rider, yeah. So actually, Ghost Rider was a big threat. Because mm-hmm. if it's not Sebastian Shaw that comes, but if it's one of the cards in the middle, like if it's Absorbing Man, I would have lost. Yeah, I think I go to 18, and then here I would have been at 16. But I've been trying 
and I couldn't actually find a way to beat that. Yeah. I think the only way to beat that was losing to Ebony Ma, Metal, Infinite. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this was the right play, because you just have a very, very slim chance. It's like one in seven. Yeah. yeah. Wait, would it not be three and seven? No, because if Mobius, Killmonger, or any of the Broodlings come, you win. Oh, okay. Because Sorry, like, did, it needs to be specifically yeah, absorbing man, so you lose this one and this one. If anything at yeah, seven you, you comes, win. you win right. Yeah, so it's really one card. So. All right, though. So, in the end, I didn't think the replay would take the whole hour, but well, the whole two hours actually. That's good. That was super good, though. Uh, but yeah, when we build our perspective, the goal is to try and base ourselves on the facts as much as possible. The thing is, most of the time when we play, although we have facts, the second thing we're gonna go towards is our perspective. While most of the time, the second thing we should look at is our opponent's perspective. Because our opponent's perspective, if we manage to get our opponent, like to get in our opponent's shoes, we have access to more facts. Because usually when we look at the facts, we look at the facts that are available to us. But when we get into our opponent's shoes, we need to think about the facts they have as well. So we're going to start thinking about our resources. We're going to start thinking about their perspective on the cards in our deck and these kind of things. And that will usually impact our play much, much more than if we go to our perspective, because our perspective is the thing that we do naturally. Like, naturally, we have our point of view. It's impossible to not have a point of view when you're the one thinking. So try it in your next play sessions. Never consider your point of view, because it's always there. So basically, by thinking facts and then opponents, you're just adding a new perspective while not losing any, because it's one that you can't lose, which is yours. And that's it. Unless someone has questions or anything. I think... I don't know what... I, I, mean, I, I don't know where I'd place this. At, at, somewhere between... I guess... Somewhere between this is should be one of the first discussions to this is an advanced discussion it's just maybe there's multiple tiers depending on where you are in your play style but this is this was an excellent lesson i never know where i put them like in the coaching pyramid because some people like understand that kind of things really fast and it's good that like sometimes can unlock a lot of things for them and other people if they don't have all the basics of the game they're just going to say yes for two hours and then completely forget about it. <laughs> like, I need to put a sticky note on my cell phone that says, okay, now look at their perspective. Now look at their perspective. Yes, get in their shoes. I mean, you're a mm -hmm. doctor. You should know that. Like, don't they tell you, like, consider your patient and the fact that they're, they fear for their life and they're scared and that kind of stuff? Yeah, but we're still right. Um. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say, have you have you been to the doctor ever, then? <laughs> well, not Bishop, because I should I should mean, play Marvel stuff together. Yeah. together. Yeah. The other doctors didn't. When I tried to play video games in the hospital, they were like, "You're supposed to rest." Bishop would be like, "Oh, what deck are you playing?" It's right. <laughs> All right, uh, I will yeah. uh, close the YouTube video because it's been like two hours and twenty minutes. Thanks for listening the whole way. Uh, as usual, if there are any questions comments or uh, join us on the discord if you're a premium member join us in the sessions directly if you're not a premium member already i'm pretty sure it's very cheap for all the services you'll get so please consider it and have a great day